you ever go to the department stores and wonder how they decorate their beautiful looking professional Christmas trees? Now, although I'm not a professional Christmas decorator, I think I have cracked the code. So in this video, I'm going to show you all of my secrets and tips and share with you how I decorate a professional looking Christmas tree for a non-professional. So I did create a video last year that showed you guys step-by-step -step how I decorate my 12 foot Christmas tree. But this year I did get a smaller seven foot tree that's going in front of our dining room and I am decorating it completely different. So I wanted to give you guys a step-by-step -step how I decorate this tree. So keep in mind, this is just to give you ideas. You don't have to go out and buy all of this stuff. And if there's something that you don't have, then simply just skip that step. But let's go ahead and get started with tip number one is finding the right size for the room that you have. I recommend having at least a foot of open space between the highest topper on the tree and the ceiling. So for example, if you have 10 foot ceilings, I wouldn't go any taller than an eight and a half foot tree. That way you still have some room to add height to the tree by putting a topper. Now, if you have super tall ceilings and you're feeling really bold and wanna make a big statement, then go as tall as you can decorate. My second tip is to pick a theme and a corresponding color scheme. Meaning nowadays you can get just about as creative as you want. You can stick with the traditional red and white scheme. You can do modern glam, which consists of golds and silvers and whites. I've seen a lot of black checkered themed trees. I've even seen a lot of pink blush or even blue navy trees. You can theme it out extra by doing like a candy cane theme or gingerbread house themed, or just keeping it wintry and simplistic. Either way, go over to Pinterest and get some ideas before you start decorating. This tree that I'm going to show you is going to be a red and white, kind of a modern glam style. My next tip is to plug it in to a remote control plug. So basically you just use one of those plugs like I'm showing on the screen, plug your tree into that, and then you can control turning the lights on and off by a click of a button. The ones that I have are from Home Depot and they are a lifesaver without having to move the tree and try and plug it in every night. Now you've seen me fluffing this tree for the last few minutes and my fourth tip is to fluff out your tree in layers. Now this seems kind of like an obvious tip and this actually takes the most time, but what I've seen is that if you put your whole tree up, meaning all of the layers on the tree, if it's an artificial tree, and then you go in and just, you know, go through a couple of branches, then there's lots of holes and gaps that you may miss in the tree, which is why it is just easiest to put one layer on at a time go ahead and fluff out that whole section, touching almost every single branch, pulling it in different directions, and then putting on the next layer and doing the same thing. You may wanna check and make sure all of your lights are working properly, but here's what I do. I fluff out even through the layers. I go in and pull down one section and then completely fluff out that layer before moving to the next section. Now, sometimes I will get battle wounds whenever fluffing out. I'll look down at my hands and they're all scratched. Now, you can use rubber gloves to save your arms and hands from scratching up from the tree. Now, if you are working with a larger tree and it is really hard to get up there and fluff the top of the tree or you have to like get up and down of a, a ladder. Now, one of the tips I use in my for my 12 foot tree is I get a different stand and I do everything on a bottom stand before moving it up to the top layer. Now this saves me so much time from going up and down a ladder. Now this tree, because it's only seven feet, I don't really have too much of an issue reaching the top, but anything taller, I would get my second stand out and then not only fluff everything out, but I also tend to decorate part of the tree on a whole different stand. And then once it's fully decorated, then I move it up to the top layer. Now I did step on a chair right here just to get everything nice and fluffed out at the top. Being 5'4 doesn't really play to my benefit here. So now that this tree is all up and completely fluffed out, then my next tip is to add more lights. 
In my opinion, these pre-lit trees never come with enough lights. And in this tree, I'm using these specialty LED cascading lights in the warm white color. So this is my very first time using these lights. I do have something similar that I use on a garland, but these have a little bit of a wiring to them. So you don't actually go in and wrap the tree. Now on a side note, what I've noticed is that we have always just stuck with the traditional lights. They're easy to get, you sell them at the store, but when one bulb goes out, then a whole strand goes out and you know, that gets really annoying. So in the last couple of years, I've really started to get creative with the lights that I use on the tree. So for my main tree, I use LED cluster lights and you can change the setting and have them twinkle in a specific way. And when I saw these cascading lights, I thought this was such a cool idea and why not try it out just to give you something different than your traditional lights. So these lights in particular, what you do is you grab the end. And what I did was wrap it around a branch at the very top of the tree. That way it'll stay in place. So once I got it kind of stuck in place at the very top of the tree, then what I'm basically doing is gathering the little string of lights and spreading them out so that it'll cover at least half of the tree. Now you can get a little bit creative with these and this, since this was my very first time using them, what I decided to do was actually weave them in and out of the tree. I like having lights deep in the tree to give it a more dimensional look, but some of the box or some of the tutorials I've seen have shown that you just kind of leave it out and let it cascade like a waterfall effect. So here I am weaving those little strands in and out of the tree. I'm nervous that it'll get a little bit tangled, but I didn't run in to um, a whole lot of issues because I was able to easily separate them. In my opinion, this is one of the most important steps is to add extra lights or even adding some type of lights that have a different effect, like a twinkle effect, because I promise you that is going to be the most drastic impact of your tree or at least in my opinion, it is. So don't be afraid to think a little bit outside the box on the different types of lights that you want to use. So if there's any extra strands that are a lot longer, I think these ended up being around nine foot. And again, this was a seven foot tree. Then I'm just weaving them all into the bottom of the tree. Now I am using two packs of these cascading lights. So the first pack covered just half of the tree and then I'm going to use this side to cover the other half of the tree. Now you could definitely make it work with just one pack of these cascading lights if you wanted to separate the lights further apart. So after I finish getting all the lights set up, my next tip is to then add your ribbon. Now there are so many different ideas and ways that you can add ribbon to your tree. You can get different sizes, you can get different types of ribbons, different textures. Um, for this tree, I decided to keep it simple with just two different colors. Now in my last tree, I did cut the ribbon and layer them together, but for this tree, I decided to not cut the ribbon and to actually use it as a cascading ribbon meaning I will grab the top piece of the ribbon and hook it to a branch so that it stays in place. And you wanna go a little bit deeper into the tree and then pull it outward and back inward. Meaning you don't wanna be pulling the ribbon straight down. Otherwise it will flatten up the tree and you really want it to have a nice curved dimension. So once I finished the first section of the red ribbon, I did cut that super long piece and now I am going in with the next color and following the pattern diagonally. Now instead of doing each color separate, another suggestion you could do is layer the ribbon together and just create one dramatic effect. You can even use the ribbon to make bows and just add bows throughout your tree or even in little spiral loops and have them hanging from the tree. I will recommend try to have all of your ribbon going in the same somewhat direction, meaning try not to put some ribbon completely vertically and then turn around and do some ribbon horizontally. 
I am a fan of staggering it a little bit, but not doing complete opposite directions. Now keep in mind if you do go vertically or diagonally or anything upward, then it draws the eye upward and it does make the tree look taller. Now, once you're done with the ribbon, or if you don't have any ribbon, then you can completely skip that step, but it is to add the topper. Now for this tree, I am adding some more height to the tree because I have enough space above and I use what's called these long picks and kind of make almost like a firework effect at the top. If you do use something more traditional like an angel or a star, you can still add these picks to make it stand out even more. But if height is what you are looking for, then this is a great way to add that height. Now, most of the picks and specialty decorations that I have on this tree are from a wholesale Christmas market that is local to my area, but you can find things like this similar to at Hobby Lobby and Michael's. And you can also start smaller and build a collection over the years. This leads to my next tip is to add your picks to the rest of the tree. Now my first year on my very big tree, I just started off with adding picks as the topper and then throughout after I built the collection, I was able to go through and start adding them throughout the entire tree. Now where you want to add them is maybe wherever you have a ribbon indention, meaning wherever you linked a ribbon to the part of the tree or to any gaps throughout the tree that you might see. You're gonna have gaps naturally, whether you have a real tree or a fake tree, and this is just a great spot to put them if you see any. Now, another tip that I typically do that I didn't include here, um, but I do do on my main tree is I only decorate the front. So it really just depends on where your, you put your tree. So here I do have it in front of the window so that people can see from outside at night and also in the dining room area where you can see. But in my main living room, you cannot see the back of the tree because it's against the wall. So in order to save a little bit of money, I really just decorate and add pit to the front of the tree where it's going to be shown. So the steps are really important because if we went in and tried to add all of the picks and then turn around and tried to add ribbon, then we, we would be covering up, which is why I find that doing it in this order is really important. Now, my next tip is to add any type of specialty ornaments you have. So specialty ornaments may not be your typical ball ornaments, but they are anything that hang that have either sentimental value or are delicate or something really special. I didn't have any for this tree, but my next and final tip is to add your traditional ball ornaments. Now you do wanna add them deeper in your tree opposed to at the very end of a branch. Now by following these steps, I hope it was a lot easier for you to decorate your Christmas tree and that you now have a beautiful professional looking Christmas tree.